Self incompatibility is a general name for several genetic mechanisms in angiosperms, which prevent self fertilization and thus encourage outcross and allogamy. It should not be confused with genetically controlled physical or temporal mechanisms that prevent self pollination, such as heterostyly and sequential hermaphroditism. Dichogamy. In plants with SI, when a pollen grain produced in a plant reaches a stigma of the same plant or another plant with a similar genotype, the process of pollen germination, pollen tube growth, ovule fertilization and embryo development is halted at one of its stages and consequently no seeds are produced. SI is one of the most important means of preventing inbreeding and promoting the generation of new genotypes in plants, and it is considered as one of the causes for the spread and success of angiosperms on the earth. Topic. Mechanisms of single locus self incompatibility The best studied mechanisms of SI act by inhibiting the germination of pollen on stigmas, or the elongation of the pollen tube in the styles. These mechanisms are based on protein protein interactions, and the best understood mechanisms are controlled by a single locus termed S, which has many different alleles in the species population. Despite their similar morphological and genetic manifestations, these mechanisms have evolved independently, and are based on different cellular components, therefore, each mechanism has its own, unique S genes. The S locus contains two basic protein coding regions, one expressed in the pistil, and the other in the anther and or pollen referred to as the female and male determinants, respectively. Because of their physical proximity, these are genetically linked, and are inherited as a unit. The units are called S haplotypes. The translation products of the two regions of the S locus are two proteins which, by interacting with one another, lead to the arrest of pollen germination and or pollen tube elongation, and thereby generate an SI response, preventing fertilization. However, when a female determinant interacts with a male determinant of a different haplotype, no SI is created, and fertilization ensues. This is a simplistic description of the general mechanism of SI, which is more complicated, and in some species the S haplotype contains more than two protein coding regions. Following is a detailed description of the different known mechanisms of SI in plants. <laughs> Gametophytic self incompatibility GSI. In gametophytic self incompatibility GSI, the SI phenotype of the pollen is determined by its own gametophytic haploid genotype. This is the more common type of SI. Two different mechanisms of GSI have been described in detail at the molecular level, and their description follows. The RNAase mechanism The female component of GSI in the Solanaceae was found in 1989. Proteins in the same family were subsequently discovered in the Rosaceae and Plantagenaceae. Despite some early doubts about the common ancestry of GSI in these distantly related families, phylogenetic studies and the finding of shared male determinants F-box proteins clearly established homology. Consequently, this mechanism arose approximately 90 million years ago, and is the inferred ancestral state for approximately 50% of all plants. In this mechanism, pollen tube elongation is halted when it has proceeded approximately one third of the way through the style. The female component ribonuclease, termed srNase, probably causes degradation of the ribosomal RNA (rRNA) inside the pollen tube. In the case of identical male and female S alleles, and consequently pollen tube elongation is arrested, and the pollen grain dies. The male component was only recently putatively identified as a member of the F box protein family. Despite some fairly convincing evidence that it may be the male component, several features also make it an unlikely candidate. The S-glycoprotein mechanism The following mechanism was described in detail in Papaverias. In this mechanism, pollen growth is inhibited within minutes of its placement on the stigma. The female determinant is a small, extracellular molecule, expressed in the stigma. The identity of the male determinant remains elusive, but it is probably some cell membrane receptor. The interaction between male and female determinants transmits a cellular signal into the pollen tube, resulting in strong influx of calcium cations. This interferes with the intracellular concentration gradient of calcium ions which exists inside the pollen tube, essential for its elongation. 
the influx of calcium ions arrests tube elongation within 1 to 2 minutes. At this stage, pollen inhibition is still reversible, and elongation can be resumed by applying certain manipulations, resulting in ovule fertilization. Subsequently, the cytosolic protein P26, a pyrophosphatase, is inhibited by phosphorylation, possibly resulting in arrest of synthesis of molecular building blocks, required for tube elongation. There is depolymerization and reorganization of actin filaments, within the pollen cytoskeleton. Within 10 minutes from the placement on the stigma, the pollen is committed to a process which ends in its death. At 3 to 4 hours past pollination, fragmentation of pollen DNA begins, and finally, at 10 to 14 hours, the cell dies apoptotically. Topic: <laughs> Sporophytic self incompatibility (SSI). In sporophytic self incompatibility SSI, the SI phenotype of the pollen is determined by the diploid genotype of the anther the sporophyte in which it was created. This form of SI was identified in the families, Brassicaceae, Asteraceae, Convolvulaceae, Betulaceae, Caryophyllaceae, Sterculiaceae and Polemoniaceae. Up to this day, only one mechanism of SSI has been described in detail at the molecular level, in Brassica, Brassicaceae. Since SSI is determined by a diploid genotype, the pollen and pistil each express the translation products of two different alleles, i.e. two male and two female determinants. Dominance relationships often exist between pairs of alleles, resulting in complicated patterns of compatibility, self-incompatibility. These dominance relationships also allow the generation of individuals homozygous for a recessive S allele, compared to a population in which all S alleles are co-dominant. The presence of dominance relationships in the population raises the chances of compatible mating between individuals. The frequency ratio between recessive and dominant S alleles reflects a dynamic balance between reproduction assurance, favored by recessive alleles, and avoidance of selfing, favored by dominant alleles. Topic: The SI mechanism in Brassica. As previously mentioned, the SI phenotype of the pollen is determined by the diploid genotype of the anther. In Brassica, the pollen coat derived from the anther's tapetum tissue carries the translation products of the two S alleles. These are small, cysteine-rich proteins. The male determinant is termed SCR or SP11, and is expressed in the anther tapetum as well as in the microspore and pollen .e. sporophytically. There are possibly up to 100 polymorphs of the S haplotype in Brassica, and within these there is a dominance hierarchy. The female determinant of the SI response in Brassica, is a transmembrane protein termed SRK, which has an intracellular kinase domain, and a variable extracellular domain. SRK is expressed in the stigma, and probably functions as a receptor for the SCR, SP11 protein in the pollen coat. Another stigmatic protein, termed SLG, is highly similar in sequence to the SRK protein, and seems to function as a co-receptor for the male determinant, amplifying the SI response. The interaction between the SRK and SCR, SP11 proteins results in autophosphorylation of the intracellular kinase domain of SRK, and a signal is transmitted into the papilla cell of the stigma. Another protein essential for the SI response is MLPK, a serine threonine kinase, which is anchored to the plasma membrane from its intracellular side. The downstream cellular and molecular events, leading eventually to pollen inhibition, are poorly described. <laughs> Other mechanisms of self-incompatibility These mechanisms have received only limited attention in scientific research. Therefore, they are still poorly understood. Topic: <laughs> Two locus gametophytic self incompatibility. The grass subfamily Poaeidae and perhaps all of the family Poaceae have a gametophytic self incompatibility system that involves two unlinked loci referred to as S and Z. If the alleles expressed at these two loci in the pollen grain both match the corresponding alleles in the pistil, the pollen grain will be recognized as incompatible. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Heteromorphic self incompatibility. A distinct SI mechanism exists in heterostelous flowers, termed heteromorphic self-incompatibility. 
This mechanism is probably not evolutionarily related to the more familiar mechanisms, which are differentially defined as homomorphic self incompatibility. Almost all heterostelous taxa feature SI to some extent. The loci responsible for SI in heterostelous flowers are strongly linked to the loci responsible for flower polymorphism, and these traits are inherited together. Distyly is determined by a single locus, which has two alleles, tristyly is determined by two loci, each with two alleles. Heteromorphic SI is sporophytic, i.e. both alleles in the male plant, determine the SI response in the pollen. SI loci always contain only two alleles in the population, one of which is dominant over the other, in both pollen and pistil. Variance in SI alleles parallels the variance in flower morphs, thus pollen from one morph can fertilize only pistils from the other morph. In tristellus flowers, each flower contains two types of stamens, each stamen produces pollen capable of fertilizing only one flower morph. Out of the three existing morphs, a population of a distillus plant contains only two SI genotypes, SS and SS. Fertilization is possible only between genotypes, each genotype cannot fertilize itself. This restriction maintains a one to one ratio between the two genotypes in the population. Genotypes are usually randomly scattered in space. Tristellus plants contain, in addition to the S locus, the M locus, also with two alleles. The number of possible genotypes is greater here, but a one-to-one -one ratio exists between individuals of each SI type. <coughs> Cryptic self-incompatibility Cryptic self-incompatibility exists in a limited number of taxa, for example, there is evidence for CSI in Selene vulgaris, Caryophyllaceae. In this mechanism, the simultaneous presence of cross and self-pollen on the same stigma, results in higher seed set from cross-pollen, relative to self-pollen. However, as opposed to complete or absolute SI, in CSI, self-pollination without the presence of competing cross-pollen, results in successive fertilization and seed set. In this way, reproduction is assured, even in the absence of cross-pollination. CSI acts, at least in some species, at the stage of pollen tube elongation, and leads to faster elongation of cross-pollen tubes, relative to self-pollen tubes. The cellular and molecular mechanisms of CSI have not been described. The strength of a CSI response can be defined, as the ratio of cross to self dovules, formed when equal amounts of cross and self pollen, are placed upon the stigma. In the taxa described up to this day, this ratio ranges between 3.2 and 11.5. Late acting self incompatibility Late-acting self-incompatibility is also termed ovarian self-incompatibility In this mechanism, self-pollen germinates and reaches the ovules, but no fruit is set. LSI can be prezygotic e.g. deterioration of the embryo sac prior to pollen tube entry, as in Narcissus triandrus or postzygotic malformation of the zygote or embryo, as in certain species of Asclepias and in Spathodae campanulata. The existence of the LSI mechanism among different taxa and in general, is subject for scientific debate. Criticizers claim, that absence of fruit set is due to genetic defects homozygosity for lethal recessive alleles, which are the direct result of self-fertilization inbreeding depression. Supporters, on the other hand, argue for the existence of several basic criteria, which differentiate certain cases of LSI from the inbreeding depression phenomenon. Self-compatibility Approximately one half of angiosperm species are SI, the remainder being self-compatible .Mutations that break down SI resulting in SC may become common or entirely dominate in natural populations. Pollinator decline, variability in pollinator service, the so-called automatic advantage of self-fertilization, among other factors, may favor the loss of SI. Similarly, human-mediated artificial selection through selective breeding may be responsible for the commonly observed SC in cultivated plants. SC enables more efficient breeding techniques to be employed for crop improvement. See also Diece Plant sexuality Dimorphous flower Pollination 
heterosis outcrossing allogamy monocotyledon reproduction <laughs>